There are many different scenarios that farms face when trying to determine the economic impact of cover crops on their farm. I'm going to walk you through a couple of different examples to show how this spreadsheet tool can be used. If we go into the Farm Information tab, you'll notice that I have most of this tab already filled out to save on a little bit of time. You'll need to have information in all of the yellow cells for the spreadsheets calculator to work correctly. Some yellow cells can be manually typed into, while others use a pull-down menu. So let's go ahead and take a look at this farm. The farm is located in Minnesota, and we're going to focus on 80 acres in this in a, this field. And all 80 of these acres are planted or going to be planted to cover crops. This field is located in Blue Earth County, and the farm has corn growing on this field. They plan to plant cereal rye following both corn and soybeans. And they plan to use strip tillage following both corn and soybeans as well. Now looking down into the costs for establishing the cover crop. Again, they're planning on planting cereal rye. And following corn, their plan is to pay an ag retailer or a co-op to plant the cover crop. However, following soybeans, they're going to plant and establish their own cover crop. The rate that they're planning on cereal rye to be planted following both corn and soybeans is 60 to 90 pounds per acre. So here are the, the costs behind establishing the cover crops based on their plan so far. So $12.50 an acre for a cover crop seed and $8 per acre to hire that ag retailer to plant the cover crop following corn. They don't have any cost for following soybeans for seeding. However, they have to calculate in here this operator cost since they are planning on doing this themselves. So we end up with a total establishment cost of $35.50. Now let's look at the termination. They're planning on using a herbicide to terminate their cover crop. And they're doing this in a pass that they're already planning to make. For example, if they're already making a, a pre-soybean herbicide pass, they're just going to add some extra herbicide into that pass to kill off the cover crop. And they are doing this themselves rather than hiring it done. So the cost of termination is gonna be $4.50 for that extra herbicide, plus the cost of labor for a total of $7 per acre. Here we see their estimated yields are 200 bushels per acre for corn at 450 per bushel and 55 bushels per acre for soybeans at $9.50 per bushel. So if we look at this overall cost analysis, we see that this farm is projected, unfortunately, to have a negative cash flow of $42.50 per acre in the establishment year. So uh, a positive number, if this would have been a positive number shown in green, would indicate a positive return on cover crop investment. However, a negative number, as we see shown in red, indicates a negative return on the cover crop investment. So as a farmer or someone filling out this spreadsheet, I don't want to see this negative number. So I'm actually going to go up into the spreadsheet and see if there's anything that I could maybe change that would change this negative outcome. So rather than hiring an ag retailer to plant cover crops, let's say this farm decides to plant and establish their own cover crops following both corn and soybeans. This will decrease our uh, cover crop seeding cost. However, we will have to account for again, a little bit more hired labor. I'm also going to decrease this seeding rate from 60 to 90 pounds down to 30 to 60 pounds. Therefore, we're going to decrease our seed costs here as well. So now if we scroll down and take a look at what that did to our overall economic 
analysis. So we are still negative. However, we're negative at a smaller amount. So it's a step in the right direction. However, I'm not fully satisfied. So what happens if we go up and make a different change? Before, this farm did not report any cost share payment received. So let's go ahead and say maybe they do receive a cost share payment. Let's say $25 per acre received for one year on all 80 acres. So if we scroll back down, we can see, okay, so here we see a positive cash flow in this first year. However, it's still negative when looking at the five year and 10 year net present value analyses. So what happens if we scroll back up and we make this cost share payment rather than received only for one year, what if they receive it for three years? Now we see positive cash flows for all of these net present value analyses. So again, as I said, a positive cash flow or a positive net present value shows a positive return on the cover crop investment or indicates a positive return on the cover crop investment. So we want to see positive numbers here. These are just a couple of different examples of how someone might use this tool to analyze the impact of cover crops on their farm. Let's go ahead and take a look at this detailed multi-year analysis tab to better understand how these five-year and 10-year values are calculated. This spreadsheet is a lot to look at right away. So let's break it down so it makes more sense. So here we have all of the information from the farm information tab spread out over 10 years. So as you can see, here we have year one in column B. Column C has year two and so forth all the way through to year 10. The projected um, values are all laid out here. So we'll start in year one, this farm again is planning on planting corn. Then in year two, they switch over to soybeans. Year three is back to corn, year four soybeans and so on. They're planning on using strip till every year. They're planning on planting cereal rye as the cover crop following both corn and soybeans as well. Here we see a difference now. Following corn, the farm again indicated they wanted um, to plant and establish their own cover crop. And so they wanted to do this for both following corn and soybeans. And so we see that there are $10 per acre for both of those. Again, following herbicide, they're, they're going to terminate the cover crop using a herbicide. Once we get down into the yields, here's where we see the difference. So they have corn here with an expected yield of 200 bushels per acre versus here we have soybeans with an expected bushels per acre of 55. Now, the projected yield increases come from the result of the 2019-2020 SARE cover crop survey using the responses of Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, South Dakota, and North Dakota farms. There's no yield impact estimated here in the establishment year, but each year after that, the, the spreadsheet has an estimated impact, yield impact calculated into it. Here are the results of the SARE survey. After having cover crops on a field for one year, survey respondents reported a corn yield decrease of 0.5% and a soybean yield increase of 1.6%. After two years of cover crops, corn yield improved by 0.9% and soybean yields improved by 3.5%. And after three years of consecutive years of cover crops on a field, Corn yields saw a 1% increase total, and soybean yields had a 6% increase. These yield impacts are accounted for in the long-term analysis of this spreadsheet, as shown in the expected percentage yield change line. 
If we continue down, we get into cost share payments. As we can see here in year one, this farm received $25 of cost share over all 80 acres of its cover crop acres. The same thing once we get into year two, $25 of cost share on all 80 acres. And year three, $25 of cost share on all 80 acres. Once we get into year four, we see that cost share payment goes away. That's because in the farm information tab, we indicated this farm was only receiving three years of cost share payment. So looking beyond year four, we don't see any cost share payment anymore. So this is really where we can see that long-term analysis beginning to work. Had we indicated five years of cost share, this cost share payment would have been spread further into year five. Had we indicated only one year of cost share payment, it would have been taken to just, or given for just one year. The very bottom of the spreadsheet here has our overall cost analysis. Again, calculating out the net present values of the investment of cover crops. This analysis is calculated both on a per acre and a whole field level. As mentioned before, there are many different scenarios that can be entered into this spreadsheet tool. There are a lot of different ways of going about cover crop adoption, and there's many different right answers when it comes to cover crops. So don't feel like you need to fit into any one of these examples.